Hello world, Geriatric Geek here. How in the heck are you? I hope you're doing great. It's another beautiful morning here in North Las Vegas. Today is Friday, October the 15th, 2021. Thanks for joining. You guys know why we're here. We have a couple little haul video, a few movies to show you. Um, a little bit of full feature, full moon features uh, haul uh, I did. Basically, uh, I th they had a sale not too long ago, and I picked up a few of, uh, uh, you know, the Charles Band stuff. Uh, also, I went to Walgreens yesterday. Uh, had to pick up a prescription of some something for my wife, and what did I find? Movies. Movies at Walgreens. Doesn't happen very often, but uh, they have been having them here of recent, so I thought, what the heck? Two for five dollars, and I had a ten dollar... Um, uh, rewards code so hey I was I was ready to pick those doggone things up so let me show you what we've got let me show you let me share with you oh did you notice I have my new to me retro uh, Disney World shirt on and this is uh, in celebration of their 50th anniversary 1971 is when they started um, I was not able to be down there when it did because I was just graduated from high school, but uh, this is what you would have been wearing in 1971 for Walt Disney World. Uh, happy to have it in my collection, my t-shirt collection, which is huge. But anyway, here we go guys. Let me show you what we got. Now, for, I don't know if, how many of you guys know Charles Band. Um, he did Puppet Master and he has credits of probably 300 different uh, um, films he's produced and directed over the years. Um, pretty amazing output. He uh, uh, let's let me show you real quick. I can show you. So Charles Band, there he is, the creator of Full Moon Features and the producer of Puppet Master movies. He sustained a remarkable track record of industry pioneer over the past 30 years with nearly 300 feature films under his belt. Uh, in 75, he produced his first film, Mansion of the Doomed. Within a few years, Band was fast becoming a rising star in Hollywood. He had uh, famous names with him, uh, John Carradine, Sue Leon, Christopher Lee, and Roddy McDowell. In 76, Bam formed a media company, media, inter, Home Entertainment. He had one of the first um, um, Betamax VHS releases. Just an amazing career, really. Um, he was responsible for some of the biggest cult hits of the 80s, including Ghoulies, Reanimator, Troll, <clears throat> he also um, was the original distributor for classic horror movies like the Texas Chain Chainsaw Massacre, I Spit on Your Grave, and Zombie. Just amazing fella. So he's had quite the quite the record, and um, most of his stuff nowadays is really cheap. If you go through his um, lexicon, it's you know, cheesy, crazy, over-the-top stuff, most of it. And that's what I picked up this time around. I think one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, eight different uh, movies. For example, the collector's edition of Laser Blast. Laser Blast is from 1978. It's 83 minutes long, and it's not rated. It's one of, the, a lot of these are just so bad, they're good. Um, you don't want to think when you watch uh, some of these full moon features, but uh, hey, they're kind of I enjoy them. They're kind of fun. Uh, this does not get very good reviews. Uh, let's see. Happy-go-lucky teen Billy Duncan discovers an otherworldly laser gun in the Southern California desert, making him the target of a pair of aliens who had recently executed its previous owner. As Billy reveals in the power of the weapon, revels, excuse me, as Billy revels in the power of the weapon, defending his girlfriend and warding off bullies, 
he begins to change, his skin taking on a green hue, and his mind becoming more and more malviolent. As the tainted teenager becomes more powerful and lethal, it's up to the local authorities and the aliens to stop him before he blasts his way to oblivion. <laughs> Sounds crazy. Uh, we'll check it out. We'll check it out. Let me know down below if you guys have seen any of these and what you thought of them. In the same realm. Now on Blu-ray. Creepazoids. Look at that one. Creepazoids. Or rated 72 minutes, 1987. It's a sci-fi horror. Uh, it gets middle of the road reviews. This is basically the movie Alien in B movie form, as far as I can tell. Uh, kind of an alien ripoff, from what I understand. Blending key elements of genre hits Mad Max and Alien, but produced on a tenth of their budgets. Creepazoids tells the tale of five army deserters who wander the post-apocalyptic, post-industrial L.A. landscape seeking shelter from, a, from an increasingly toxic environment and poisonous rain. They end up in an abandoned laboratory where they explore, have sex, and eventually run afoul of a cavalcade of genetically engineered creatures, including mutant rats, a monstrous baby, a massive bloodthirsty H.R. Geiger-esque beast, and something even more malviolent. <laughs> Creepazoids. Next up, the only blue uh, DVD of the group. This one, I think I've seen this in Dollar Tree. Let me know down below if you guys remember seeing this. Alien Arsenal. Alien Arsenal. Is PG-13, 93 minutes from 2009. Sci-fi, of course. It doesn't get terrible reviews, but not too good. This is also known as uh, Teenage Alien Avengers. When two nerds discover alien weapons, their superhero dreams become reality. Starting to see a theme here of these alien weapons. Alien Arsenal tells the story of two teenage misfits, Ralph and Baxter, who accidentally discover a bizarre vault full of alien weaponry and body armor in the basement of their high school. They harness the power to transform from super geeks to superheroes. Unfortunately, their discovery signals the Arsenal's alien owners, who have returned to Earth to reclaim their deadly cash and destroy humanity and the planet. Can the geeks stop them? We shall find out. Alien Arsenal. <laughs> Alright. A.K.A. Deformed Freaks. Hideous. It's just hideous. <laughs> Probably is. Uh, R-rated. 85 minutes. 1997. It's a horror comedy. And it gets middle of the road reviews. Amazing. Dr. Gloria an eccentric collector of biological oddities, has just acquired his greatest specimen, a horrible mutant born of toxic sewage. But the creature's rightful owner wants it back. The collector's clash is cut short, though. Collector's clash is cut short, though, as the sickening specimen comes to life, reanimating an angry, oozing little army of ferocious freaks. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Hideous. I may laugh all the way through this, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Got me crying. Uh, okay, we got another one. Seduced by something less than human, in love with something more. Meridian. I understand this is one of uh, uh, Charles Band's best, evidently, from what I'm, I'm reading. This is R-rated, 1980, 1990, excuse me, 85 minutes long. It's a fantasy horror. This is also known as The Ravaging. Uh, of course, Charles Band was the director. Uh, basically, basically, it's an adult fairy tale, from what I'm understanding. Trying to rip off uh, Beauty and the Beast kind of thing. 
A beautiful young artist must choose her destiny in this hauntingly sensual tale of love, passion, and revenge. Love my revenge movies. Catherine Bomarzina, Bomarzini returns to the family castle in Italy after her father's death and gets caught in the web of a mysterious love triangle. A man who is at times repulsive, at other times enchanting, and a creature of the night whose gentle eyes and touch reveal his infinite love and devotion. With the help of Martha, her help faithful childhood nanny, and the ghost of a slain young girl, Catherine discovers the medieval curse that threatens their lives and only she can dispel. There you go, Meridian. Next up, could not resist this one. Bill Mayer, Shannon Tweed, and Adrian Barbo in Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not rated, 90 minutes, 1989. It's adventure comedy. Gets middle of the road reviews. It's kind of campy and crazy, I guess. Well, no kidding, right? <laughs> These women are serious about their taste in men. To avoid a serious avocado shortage, the U.S. government hires feminist anthropology professor Margot Hunt, who's Shannon Tweed, to find the man-eating piranha women tribe who inhabit the avocado jungle of Southern California. Assisted by chauvinist Jim, Bill Mayer, and a dim-witted student named Bunny, Hunt must convince the tribe to move to Malado Malibu condos while simultaneously fending off her rival, Dr. Kurtz, who's Andre Adrian Barbeau. Meanwhile, Bunny's contemplating joining the Piranha Gals, but she must consume Jim first. I mean, let me know if you guys have seen these. Let me know. Please. Seems crazy as heck. Full moon. What are you doing? Another one. This one, I guess, is uh, inspired by the Marvel comic... Um, Marvel comic Doctor Strange. This is called... Dr. Mor Mordred, Mordred, Master of the Unknown. Dr. Mordred, Master of the Unknown. Not rated. 74 minutes, 1992. A fantasy horror. Actually gets pretty good reviews. Evidently it's one of Full Moon's best. We shall see. Like I said, the concept was from Marvel Comics' Doctor Strange. Two Beings... Okay, two beings from another dimension, two sorcerers with immeasurable powers. One has sworn to destroy the earth, the other has vowed to protect it. Their timeless battle has crossed over from the fourth dimension, and only one man will reign in the end. Dr. Mordred, Jeffrey Combs, is the chosen guardian who can protect the earth from eternal darkness. Kabul is his vengeful enemy whose impl implacable wrath has escalated with time. Kabul has arrived on earth and is planning to use his infinite powers to unleash a horde of hellish demons to devour and destroy humankind. Dr. Mordred. Master of the Unknown. Man, that's quite the ripoff, huh? Of Dr. Strange. And last, from Mo Full Moon, um, I have this. I believe I had it on uh, VHS way back when. I believe I've seen it. It wasn't too bad, so I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll pick it up on Blu-ray. Taurus Trap. It's from 1979, PG, uh, PG, 90 minutes long. It's a horror flick. Gets pretty good reviews, as I recall. Uh, it's a psychological horror has Tanya Roberts and Chuck Connors, if you remember, the old Rifleman. Used to watch that show all the time. Taurus Trap. Shannon Tweed, not too bad on the eyes either. And 
eerie and deserted wax museum, Slauson's Lost Oasis is the site for spine-tingling terror, where four unsuspecting young travelers, including Tanya Roberts uh, from Charlie's Angels, are lured into a very deadly tourist trap. Slauson, Chuck Connors, is the reclusive and bizarre owner of this attraction, which is actually more like a macabre chamber of horrors. The grotesque and frighteningly frightening mannequins in the sordid, sordid sideshow are only the beginning of the murderous mayhem and nightmarish madness to come. Uh, it's been a long time since I watched it, so I want to. I can't wait to check this one out. Probably be the first one of the full moon stuff that I watch. So how much time we got going? Okay, well, we're doing good. Next up, these are from, uh, like I said, Walgreens. Two for five, as you can see, or two ninety nine a piece. This is called Perkins 14, one of the After Dark Horror Fest 3's eight films to die for. Uh, 2009, 95 minutes, R-rated horror thriller. Get some middle of the road reviews. Um, I'm adding, can't, I'm adding these horror fest, trying to get them all. Uh, this is one of the ones I did not have, and I was happy to find it in Walgreens. So Walgreens, two for, what's it say, two for five. So I got two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six, so fifteen dollars. But I had a ten dollars, and we I had ten dollars in rewards. So five dollars. I picked up six, six horror flicks, basically. Can't beat that. Not in my, in my area. Perkins 14. Ten years ago, Officer Dwayne Harper's son was abducted. Hopper. Dwayne Hopper. Son was abducted. The final victim in a string of 14 local disappearances. Now Hopper's suspicions have been aroused by a prison inmate who bears striking similarities to the purported kidnapper. Hopper finds evidence in the criminal's apartment and seeks revenge igniting a wave of carnage that engulfs the town. Perkins, 14. All right. Next up, The Sid Vicious of Horror and Bloody as Hell, One Hammer for Sweatshop. Sweatshop. Not rated, 2009, 90 minutes. Evidently, dude does his kills with a huge hammer. And it's very gory, evidently. Straight up horror fun sweatshop is the bloodbath rave party of the year. Charlie and her friends have broken into an old steel mill to set up impromptu rave. Preoccupied with sex and alcohol, they fail to notice an enormous hulking beast who lurks in the shadows. Filled with rage and brandishing a pulverizing hammer. There you go. I'm gonna beat the devil out of folks. All right. Excuse me, just a second. My throat. There we go. Next up, some horror classics from Bella Lugosi, Clayton Moore, Angela Green. We have four movies for over four hours. There you go. We have Monstrosity, Black Dragons, The Devil's Partner, and Night of the Blood Beast. Monstrosity is from 1964. I have that movie already. I have seen it. It's not bad. Uh, you know, I mean, for a B movie, 65 minutes, not rated, sci-fi, horror. Doesn't get very good reviews, but I, I kind of enjoyed it. It's called Monstrosity. Um, the Devil's Partner, not rated, 73 minutes, 1962. It's a weird flick from what I remember. I think I do remember uh, that one. Next up, The the uh, Black Dragons, 62 Minutes, 1942, uh, Thriller. And all of these, by the way, are all in black and white. So if you like black and white stuff, this is one of those. Night of the black Blood Beast, 1958, 62 Minutes. Not very good ratings, but looks like fun. So there we go, guys. Four movies for the price of one. Next up, Timothy Hutton. 
David Kelly in the Kovac box. I have seen this around. I've seen it on the shelves in Goodwills, but never the disc was never in good shape, so I never picked it up. But it's R-rated, 2006, 102 minutes, and sci-fi thriller. Um, this is kind of a Hitch, Hitchcock kind of suspenseful movie, evidently. Uh, David Norton is used to, to being in control. As a best-selling author, he decides the fate of his characters, his heroes, his villains, their lives and deaths. But what happens when his fictional world becomes all too real? When David arrives in an idyllic Mediterranean island for a conference, his fiancée receives a strange call and jumps to her death from their hotel balcony. Okay. And he begins piecing to answers together. People start inexplicably committing suicide all around him. Now David has become the reluctant hero of his own living story, and this time he has no idea how it will end. The Kovac box. Let me know if you've seen that one. Sounds interesting. Next up, I just like the way this one looked. I don't know why. Air Panic. Air Panic. Kind of looks like something we'd find in Dollar Tree. R-rated, 1991, 2000, or excuse me, 91 minutes long from 2002. It's a drama thriller. Doesn't get great reviews, but hey, I wanted to, you know, wanted to stack it with my make two for five here. Non-stop fear. From a secret location, a psychotic computer genius named Kane carries out a personal crusade of destruction. With a group of innocent people in Kane's sight, a brilliant federal agent sets out to bring him down. Unfortunately, time is running out. There you go. It gives a disclaimer at the bottom. Interesting. Production of this film was completed prior to September 11, 2001. Some viewers may find certain scenes in this movie to be disturbing. Taking control of the air traffic control system is what I understand this is about. And crashing some planes. Next up we got Ray Liotta and William Defoe in... Control. Control. This is uh, from 2004, 99 minutes long. It's R-rated, a crime thriller. Um, gets pretty good reviews. I do like Ray Liotta and William Defoe, so I wanted to pick this one up. Ray Liotta and William Defoe lead this all-star cast as two men from opposite worlds trying to come to terms with their troubled past. Liotta pre plays Lee Ray Oliver, a violent sociopath who is granted a second chance at life when Dr. Copeland, Defoe, a pioneering scientist, offers him an experimental behavioral drug that promises to suppress his violent nature. Can't wait to check this one out. I'm kind of into behavior modification and uh, those kinds of things, so yeah, we'll check that out. All right, that's it from Walgreens, you guys. But I did uh, pick up something Tuesday from Walmart that I wanted to share with you real quick. Another Bruce Willis film. <laughs> Another Bruce Will Willis film called Survive the Game. R-rated, 97 minutes from 2021. An action thriller, of course. <laughs> Is Bruce Willis like now becoming the, the, the Nicolas Cage... <laughs> I'm afraid so. Uh, evidently this thing is not great. Let me know if you guys have seen this one and what you thought of it. Um, but it does have Bruce Willis. I, I, you know, I'm a big Bruce Willis fan. Loved uh, uh, many of his previous movies. Uh, but did not love particularly Out of Death or Cosmic Sin. I've seen both and didn't like those. Let me know if you like those. But uh, yeah, Surviving the Game. Bruce Willis and Chad Michael Murray star in this explosive crime thriller when cop David is injured in a drug bust gone wrong. His partner Cal pursues the two criminals who shot him to a remote farm owned by troubled vet Eric. As Cal and Eric plot their defense, more of the gang arrives along with a wounded David. And outnumbered, the three heroes must use stealth, smarts, and marksmanship to take down the drug-dealing 
mob put up by uh, Lionsgate probably going to watch this one today so there you go that's my haul for this for uh, this Friday the 15th of uh, October almost Halloween you guys we're almost there uh, thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed my videos give it a thumbs up and subscribe I really appreciate it if you would so hope you guys are staying safe Have, hope you're having a great day out there um, yeah keep smiling keep that positive attitude about you and until next time peace